For this project I was matched up with um, a guide dog Victoria client called Rory Douglas and um, I met with him a couple of times before I started my work and um, I found just meeting him really, really inspiring and um, over the time that I spent with him um, uh, I was able to observe um, how he live, worked with his guide dog Gideon and, um, and the positive impact that Gideon had on his life. Yeah. When you talk to someone um, who's, got, who's got a dog that you know, they bond with so much and it's not just the day to day, it's, uh, it opens doors for them you know, to a lot of things they either couldn't do before or have never been able to do before. And so uh, Caroline just you know, went on and on about how much freedom it had given her. And so I guess that's sort of where, what inspired my artwork is it's sort of built of two patterns. One that incorporates that sort of technical know-how of the dogs sort of making their way through the world. And then um, the other pattern incorporates sort of what that meant for Kaylee and Caroline. We came together and we were told that we were going to do something like this. It's all quite excited, but no one knew what we were going to do for the dog. So then we came up with all of these ideas. We had splattering, we had the landscape, which we're doing now. We had wings, we're going to mount three we, wings on the back of it. Um, some of them we had to cut down a little bit because they weren't very realistic. We chose to paint landscapes on our dog. And we thought um, being blind, it doesn't really hinder you, you can still do everything that a person with sight could do. You can go anywhere and I guess that's where the idea of landscapes came from. You can go anywhere, do anything. I'm an artist that looks at ruptures in the suburban dream. I thought this idea would be perfect uh, working with a guide dog because uh, for me they're uh, a really nostalgic and iconic image that's always been there since I was a very young kid. and. I kind of left the nose all kind of like dirty still because I kind of imagine that so it's built up of hundreds of kids slobber and stuff, for, you know. Plus the guide dog, you know, kind of gives people access to the suburbs and there's references to roads and images of suburbia throughout what I've done. Um, well, with our artwork, we've based it off a previous carey parent named Peter, who he has a guide dog, but he's still enjoys the outdoors and going hiking and he's completed one of the Oxfam walks. So we kind of based it off his love for nature. So that's kind of how like all the wood chips and the leaves came in. Well, I named the dog is Princess. I choose it because it's a nice name and I love to name that. I done red, white and an Aborigine design. Then I done the red for the back side. I'm just so happy to done, that I done it. Initially I've gone with the idea of a bird and that sense of freedom that the guide dogs provide. And um, from there I developed it further into uh, sort of an owl and that uh, sense of wisdom that they're able to provide. Our topic in art was freedom, so all the pictures we put on there were freedom, kind of, like the bugs, eagles which fly, have wings, and some of them were birds coming out of a cage. It's like a miracle for people to have a dog and to help them walk around with, because they're blind, and it's like a miracle for them to have it. Um, I knew that they um, help people who are blind and that you're not supposed to um, touch them or give them a pat when they're doing it and they can get taught really well. I think working with like the dog it just really helped us understand like exactly what like they have to go through and the difficulties so we tried to like bring that out in the dog so that's why we have like textures on um, him and yeah it's really helped us realise like from their point of view where how they see Melbourne especially and the rest of the world. Yeah, it's like some people, if they saw someone with a guide dog, they'll go, oh, they're blind, they can't see, they're like missing out on the, this part of life. But it's not really true in a way because they can still get out, they can still enjoy everyday life. They just 
can't see what's going on around them, but they can still feel it and everything. Observing somebody gain or regain their independence is a wonderful thing. I think it's underestimated how brave a lot of our clients are. I always had a can-do attitude. <laughs> Kurt could still see then, so he can just remember <laughs> how I looked when I was 18. But when I lost a lot of sight, I, I lost the confidence to do things. There was a period where he was losing his independence and that was really devastating. I'd you know, wait for Melissa to come home from work so I could go for a walk. It was pretty tough. <laughs> Who's gonna be your... Like, right now, I'm pretty dependent on my parents for most things. Eventually, my husband said to me, why don't you get a guide dog, you know, because you're too scared to leave the house. I need to become more independent. I really don't know how I would have coped if guide dogs hadn't have been there to provide their orientation mobility services and then to match me up with such a cool dog. And what we like to do is to try and show them how much fun they can have whilst getting a decent level of mobility. I'm lucky Tilla's a fast walker and so am I, so you know, we overtake people walking down the street and you know, she's looking for the opportunity to slide past them and then you know, when it presents herself we're off and around we go. She's a, just an awesome dog. She's uh, almost like a person. <laughs> it's the biggest thing, the freedom. It's like I was let out of jail. Oh, it's unbelievable. It, uh, I opened up a new world. There's that joy in working with a dog. It gives you an added incentive to get out and become more independent. They can have that independence because there's going to come a point too where my children will grow up and not want mum so that they can safely participate in activities that any sighted child would also participate in. You walk with it. It helps her yeah. walk around so she doesn't bump into people. Tegan's just become part of my, part of my everyday life. She goes everywhere with me. She will kind of keep coming and checking on me every sort of 10 minutes or so. She'll come in, give me a big lick and then run away before I can pat her. You know? <laughs> She's a part of me. I, I just hold on to the harness and I follow her moves and she follows mine. It opens people up, gives them dignity, gives them pride in what they're able to achieve. If I didn't have a dog, I wouldn't feel confident. I'd think, oh, I might end up somewhere and the kids will get hurt. But with the dog, I trust her so much that I trust her with the kids too. I wanted a dog that was going to improve my quality of life and my confidence and my independence. And she's definitely done that. Well, I can't imagine being without one. With Tiller and a GPS that guide dogs have provided, it means that I can actually go places that I haven't been before. You know, knowing that I've got something that tells me where I am and also a dog that can get me around the obstacles. Always my little mate that's there and just, she's always happy. Just got to pat her or give her a treat and she'll wag her tail. I wish it was that easy with everyone. <laughs> Feed them and pat them and they'll be nice. Guide dogs has taught me. You can do a lot of things, but some things you need help with. If it wasn't for the help of guide dogs, I think that blind people would be doing what we did in the 1800s, just sitting in a room, you know, doing nothing, which would be really sad. I want a guide dog when I'm older. Four days was, was the time frame. Returned from the holiday late on the Friday night. Um, and as I understand it, I was in, in hospital having brain surgery the Monday afternoon. Sal and I uh, um, and the boys had returned from a fantastic holiday up at the Gold Coast, where we took the boys for um, uh, a great week away, Universal Studios, uh, Wet and Wild, etc. had a great time. 
Um, and upon return from holiday, um, I was suffering with um, uh, pains in my, in my left ear. Following um, my infection, um, I had um, gained um, meningitis, which had um, subsequently caused an abscess on my brain, therefore fluid on the brain, and the brain had to be drained. I woke up in hospital, realised that I couldn't see anything, didn't really take too much notice of that at the time, but I just heard lots of different voices, including wonderful Sally, my boys, but also um, my family from the UK, and then everything sort of unfolded from there. Yeah, so that was a challenging time just to hear it bang, you know, you are going to be without vision for the rest of your foreseeable life. I think when it first happened to Rory, I absolutely thought it was a major disability because it's such a huge, I think if you've had sight, it's such a huge thing to take away. Well, I was introduced to Gideon in September of 2014 um, and on another program that I was attending um, as it was thought by um, Janine, my guide dog instructor, that Gideon could, and she emphasised the word could, uh, at that time be a potential good fit. So Gideon um, spent uh, another 24-hour uh, period with me um, doing some obedience classes, doing some walking around his residential area and being introduced to him and working with him for that short period of time just re-emphasised the fact that working with a dog was, was what was right for me. And as a result, Gideon was made on offer to me. Sally was here at the time and it was really emotional. Sally burst into tears. I got a bit teared up, um, but it was just wonderful to have got to that level, if that's the right description, to be to be deemed ready to take on um, or, 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 or be um, right um, for a guide dog, and that guide dog, all going to plan, could be or would be Gideon, which was just huge, absolutely huge. The main turning point for me uh, probably would have been uh, a couple of months after Rory got Gideon, I, was, I think, because he could see how much more independent he was just in those couple of months and how much his world had been opened up to him and how he was going to get back to a very normal life. I mean, it's still, it's still things that are hard, like computers are hard and there's a whole learning, a whole new language, but I think once he got Gideon, after I'd seen him with kids for a couple of months, I could absolutely see that he was going to be totally independent. He's changed my life dramatically, changed our lives dramatically, not just me, the guide dog handler, but my, my family's life. Them knowing that I have that confidence and that independence to be able to go out and about, to be able to take the boys out to the library, up to the milk bar, pick them up from school, um, you know, get from A to B to C. Um, it's just tremendous and um, my, my life has, has changed dramatically in a relatively short period of time because of Guide Dogs Victoria and the guide dog that I have in Gideon. I think that's what I learned the most is, you know, you can sort of imagine how much someone must bond with an animal like that, but to then talk to someone who's, um, you know, has that, has that dog as part of their lives day in and day out. And, um, you know, I think that was the biggest learning experience for me. Yeah. This has brought more awareness to people with vision impairment. And now we can kind of go, oh yeah, that person, has a visual impairment, so, but they've still got this freedom with the guide dog. When we met with our client, I think we were all just struck by how courageous and how confident she was, even without her sight. I mean, uh, we, we don't know what it's like to live without sight. 
it made me think, you know, in order to come up with a concept that was suitable for the dog, uh, I kind of thought about the role of the dog, which was kind of like taking people around the suburbs and giving them the freedom to be kind of somewhat free. And so that was kind of something that I thought about. Often we see people for just what they are or what disability they have, but actually they've got a whole personality, they've got all different types of hobbies they like to do. So it was really important for us to, um, to know that. When we went with Margaret, she told us all about like what happens when the do guide dog, is, like when she is like calling for the guide dog, the guide dog will come to her and like sort of like sit with her to make sure she's okay. Initially I've gone with the idea of a bird and that sense of freedom that the guide dogs provide and um, from there I developed it further into uh, sort of an owl and that uh, sense of wisdom that they're able to provide. I've been an artist for a long time. I've done the dog, it's colourful and I like doing it and it's fun to do it and I'm just so happy to do that I've done it. Rory having lost his sight as an adult and then having to relearn how to operate in the world without sight, I'm just totally in awe of his um, um, ability to be able to do that. You know, they help their owners every single day and they, you know, make their life a lot easier, you know, without the guide dogs they, you know, pretty much wouldn't be able to go out in public or do a lot of things around the house. So we just learnt a lot more about what the dog does and how important they really are. My name is Jeremy. I'm in year one. Talented, um, friendly, um, intelligent. I like playing games. That's my favourite thing to do. I had cataracts and um, I had to go to the doctor. He replaced the cataracts in my eyes with plastic ones. So I can't see as well. It was super hard. Um, for me to play, play handball because I can't see as well. If I can't see the ball, how am I going to hit it? I am positive, funny. Depending on which friend, one of them would probably say I'm crazy. If I was somebody that went suddenly blind, then you kind of notice, but it's just slowly grown in. No one could tell that I have a vision impairment, but unless I use my cane. And I get the question a lot of what can you see? It's kind of really hard to answer because I don't know what you see. They go, you know, how do you move around? But I just do it. If anything, my vision's just gonna get worse. I could be about fully blind when I'm about 50. Well, I wouldn't mind being on a show called Time and Away. I don't know if you've heard of it. My name is Tom Beltraw and I am 11. I like to go for walks in the night and hunt spiders. I have retinitis pigmentosa. I don't really know what it means. It's just like tunnel vision. I can mainly see just in front of me. I have a pet snake. Her name is Shilace. Three words that describe me. Is smart, uh, good at doing braille, and good at bushwalking. The three words that best describe me is probably chilled, out there. I like to let people know who I am. Somewhat shy when I first meet people. Oh, what I hope people would say about me is bubbly and happy and hopefully good singer, not trying to be 
Vain, is that the word, vain? The three words that best describe me are kind, clever and daring. If I could have any three things, they would probably be no problems at school and um, everyone understanding how my vision works. Why I have um, white hair and um, light skin and not much pigment in my eyes. My eye condition is ocular albinism. Ocular cutaneous albinism. My eyes just jiggle. My eyes, they move back and forth sometimes, like uncontrollably. And sometimes people were like, why are your eyes shaking? It's kind of creepy. And I find that kind of hard because it's like, um, I have to explain to them, this is me, this is who I am, deal with it or just go away. Well, if people make comments about me, if they're really annoying or upsetting, then I just sort of say, I sort of say, please don't do that again or anything. I wear a hat in the classroom to block the glare from the lights. Something I would want to invent that would make my life easier would probably be a braille phone. I'd invent a phone that when you call somebody, um, it paid you money back. Something that I can actually like scan the piece of paper and then enlarge it. Like those photocopiers that you put it down. But like portable, carry it along into the restaurant and just quickly scan the menu. When I leave school, I would like to work at a zoo. I really want to become a Paralympian and also an athletics teacher. I was quite into being a social worker, but then got the idea of architecture, so that sort of took over. Architecture is very visual. That's sort of a bit of a tricky path. I really want to go to NYU. Scientist. You know that person that does the atom things and all that? It's very hard to do atom things and it's very good um, being able to handle them. There is lots of advantages. But there's definitely advantages and privileges. You get to have a cane. You get to wear glasses. Some people say that's not that good, but I think it's really good. Sometimes if you have glasses, you, you're, you're sometimes a bit smarter. You get to learn braille. I would look at the positives, not the negatives. I can just hear, smell, taste and feel a lot more than people with just no vision loss. It's like good for having challenges. It's good, it's um, an advantage to have the hardest challenge. I have a bit more power than other students. I might be able to get a guide dog. Do you ever have any troubles or any problems communicate them? If I had the choice to change myself, I wouldn't. I'd change seeing, seeing things. Now I can't see the ball as well and then, then it's very hard to play, you know? I actually wouldn't change anything about myself. If I could change one thing about myself, it would be better vision. I don't think I really would want to change because being unique isn't a crime, it's an honour. Don't change just because someone else wants you to. Try and have fun doing everything. Don't complain. Listen to your mum and dad. Don't always run next to me because I might not see you and I might bang into you. What would you want to be doing once you leave school? Going on holiday. <laughs>